a kickflip. <laughs> Out of my board. What's Tony, up, Joe? How are you? What's up, man? So happy to be doing 73 questions with you. Oh, well, thanks for including me. Oh, thanks for, thanks for doing it. Sure. Um, so the first question, just to get out of the way because the internet is dying to know, how many times this week have you been semi-recognized or misrecognized as Tony Hawk? <laughs> uh, maybe three or four. Okay, and who have you been most recently mistaken for? Uh, let's see, Kelly Slater, Lance Armstrong, and the guy from the movie Ghost? Patrick Swayze. No, the guy that betrays him. Yeah, you do kind of look like him. What's the most common misconception about skaters? Uh, I think that they're lazy stoners, and I can tell you it's the exact opposite. To be a pro skater, you have to be disciplined, you have to be determined, and you have to work at it. Mm. And how much are you skating these days? I skate almost every day. And you've been skating for how many years? Whew, uh, 41 years now. Wow. And do you still have any early boards? I do. I have a couple special ones in here. You want to see them? I want to see them, yes. So, how easily does skateboarding come to you? I was not a natural. It was actually something I had to work out very much. And do you remember what motivated you to start? Yeah, my older brother was a surfer and he was skating in the 70s and some of my friends in my neighborhood were skating, so I just picked it up with them. What is your first uh, memory of riding on a skateboard? Uh, I remember riding down the alley and running into the fence and getting splinters in my hands. Oh, God. And those are the boards right there? Yeah, here are my boards. Awesome. Uh, this is my very first professional skateboard model with my name on it, yep. and it's the actual one that I rode. Uh, I gifted it to a friend of mine who was an amateur skater back then, mm. and recently he gifted it back to me, so I'm very That's thankful so cool. to have it. This board was actually an auction item for our foundation. Uh, I sent this board to surviving members of The Clash, and they decorated it, and they signed it, and they wrote lyrics to London Calling on it, and uh, when it went up for auction, I. I was the highest bidder, because I couldn't let this go to right, someone right, else. Of course not, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this is actually a replica of my very first skateboard, oh, look at which that. I happen to hold on to and now sits in the Smithsonian. That is so cool. Smithsonian. Yeah. All right, now back to your childhood, though. How did your parents feel as you started spending more and more time in the skate park? Uh, they were surprisingly supportive. Most of my friends' parents did not want them skating, so I felt very lucky. Right. Now, do you have to be young to be a skater? Uh, it, it helps with resilience and balance in the beginning, but I don't think so. I feel like you can start as slow as you want. There are plenty of facilities around to try if you're older. Right. Now, what would you say is the moment your career completely changed? Uh, when our first video game was released, uh, things changed dramatically. I got a lot more opportunity. I didn't have to compete to make a living at skating. Uh, the recognition factor was, was immense and um, it really tipped the scales for skating in terms of general popularity. It did, and you're being interviewed by a huge fan of these games. Oh, thanks. Uh, but I have to ask you, do you choose yourself as your avatar when you're playing your games? Are you asking if I play with myself? No, 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 I did not say, I did not say that. Uh, yes, I play as my character in THPS series because inevitably I know all my special moves and that's uh, how I get the highest scores. Yeah. Because if you have your own video game, people want to challenge you at it. Right. And uh, so playing as your own character is more appropriate. There you go, cheat mode a little bit. What's a trick that video game Tony can do that real life Tony cannot do? <laughs> uh, let's see, 900 to revert to manual to kickflip McTwist on the next wall. Not gonna be trying that anytime soon. Uh, no, never. <laughs> Who's the most exciting person that you've gamed with? Ooh, uh, I play video games with Bruce Willis at a charity event a while back, and uh, he and I went head to head. I can't remember which game, but I won. Now, on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your video game skills? Uh, I'm about an eight on my game series, and maybe on any Mario game that I play with my daughter. Uh, any of the new games, um, I'm not. You know, the shooters, forget it. Right. Now, I heard that you gave up violin to become a skater, is that this right? This is true. Uh, I was playing violin at the same time when I first started skating, and my, my music teacher at school wanted me to do all these school concerts on the weekends, but I was off at, in Florida at skate events, and so he told me that I had to choose one or the other. Well, I think you made the right choice. Do you want to go outside? Yeah, we love it. So, Tony, what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, wow. Uh, I travel extensively, and when people crowd the baggage carousel for their bags, it drives me crazy. It's Can't like, let's just that. all stand back and wait till we see our bags. Oh, I hate that, too. What's the best birthday party you've ever had? <laughs> my 50th was a treat. Uh, my wife surprised me. We had uh, Mark Mothersbaugh sang happy birthday to me on stage. Nice. Uh, John Doe and Xene from the band X played a few songs, and the band Poptone also played. Now, when you fly, do you check your boards, or do you carry them on? 
I carry them on if possible, but there are a few key international airports where you cannot carry skateboards, including London Heathrow and Sydney, so um, uh, I have to check them in, unfortunately. And who do we have here? Oh, here's my daughter. Hi. Hey. She also likes to spin. <laughs> so, best skate park in the United States, what is it? Ooh. I really like the Linda Vista skate park here in San Diego. It's brand new and has a little bit of everything, and it's got a lot of variety and terrain. Right. And you're a trainee skater, is that correct? I am a transition skater, yes. What, what does that mean? It means my expertise is in uh, ramps with a radius, yeah. um, because I grew up skating backyard pools, and that's what pools were, you know, there's emulate waves, and uh, I, I just learned how to skate half pipes much better than anything else. Now, skate feels like its own language, obviously. You got laser flips, eggplants, <laughs> bod varials, jealous husbands. <laughs> yeah. Sounds so cool saying all these words, but where do all of these names come from? The general rule was if you created a trick, you get to name it, and anything goes. I mean, there's no rules in skateboarding, so we have some ridiculous names. All right, now, can you tell me something in skate language and uh, see if I can decipher it? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the other day, I tried to do switch kickflip to frontside hurricane right. down a six stair and ended up landing dark side and credit carding on the bottom. Right, okay, so that means that you were rolling, you broke a bone, and then you found out you have a bad credit score, right? Yeah, I not really broke a bone. Let's just say that my skateboard landed in the most uncomfortable place. Okay. What, what is the craziest thing that you've ever done on a skateboard? I jumped between two seven-story buildings in downtown Los Angeles for an MTV show. Tony. <laughs> I'm still here. What's the hardest part of any trick? The hardest part of any trick is committing to the landing. It's... it's there are all kinds of elements to a trick, and you can have all those pieces, but it, the, when the time comes, the moment of truth is if you're really going to make it. What tricks have you invented? Uh, a, a few. I'd say the most popular ones are Stalefish, Madonna, 720, Ollie 540, Kickflip McTwist. The ingenuity in this name design, I'm blown away. So, how long did it take you to train to land the 900? I tried 900s on and off for about 10 years before I finally made one. Incredible. And have you seen anyone land a 1080? I have. I've seen two people land 1080s. They're much younger than me, and they did it on a much bigger ramp. Um, but uh, it's very impressive. What's a trick that you're trying to master today? The most recent trick I've been trying is an alley-oop frontside lip slide into a backside smith grind. I still have no idea what that means. I don't expect you to. Do you have any pre-competition superstitions? I don't really have superstitions. I have more of an OCD, the way that I put my gear on. It's always left first, but I've just been doing that since I was a kid, and why I stop now. What's the most memorable injury that you've ever had? Uh, I broke my pelvis, uh, fractured my skull, and broke my thumb all in one fell swoop. How do you talk yourself back onto the board after going through something like that? That was the hardest thing to come back from. Um, a lot of things that I took for granted, I would come back to were actually very daunting and scary to me. Uh, my balance changed. It took me about a year to really, to really get back to where I was comfortable with all my tricks, and uh, just little by little. What would you say is the biggest life lesson you've learned in skateboarding? Biggest life lesson is the value of perseverance. Just trying something over and over and, and keeping at it and not giving up. Wise words from Tony Hawk. Oh, sounds like we got some skating in the distance going on uh, here. Oh, those are my kids skating in the backyard. Naturally they would be, and that is a hawk on your gate. It's a recurring theme to have hawks in your home? <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't have an abundance of them, but this is actually a silhouette of my first skateboard graphic, like that white board that you saw in there. Uh, this is the only gate exclusive to it. That's really cool, very apropos. Oh, um, what is also apropos is Birdhouse. So where did Birdhouse come from? Uh, Birdhouse is the skateboard company I started because I thought that my career as a, skate, as a pro skater was coming to an end and I wanted to stay in the industry, I wanted to create my own brand and have my own team and little did I know that was sort of the beginning of my second wave of a career in skating. Right. Now when did you start the Tony Hawk Foundation? Uh, in 2002. And was it always just about skate parks? Mostly about skate parks but also about empowering communities and youth to to do something for themselves and to give them the resources and the funding to actually get parks built. Right. And uh, it's, it's the proudest work that I've done. It's so cool. How many skate parks have you opened? Uh, we've helped to fund over 900 facilities. Very inspiring. 
Now, when it comes to designing them, how much of a say do you get? Uh, I help in the design on some of them. I, I get all the designs across my desk, but I'd say in the last 10 years, they really improved. I just try to mark them up and, and make sure that it caters to all skill levels and all styles. And you also recently designed a fashion line and launched it in Paris, right? Yes, I helped to design the Tony Hawk signature line. So cool. What's your favorite place to skate in Paris? The new Vans skate park that was built for the Vans Park series most recently. Now, how would you describe your personal style, Tony? I would say it's subdued, clean, um, relatively cool for a 51-year-old. And do you have a favorite shoe for skating? I do, my new Lakai Protos in the new colorway. Oh, not bad, look at that. Now with all the achievements and the endorsements you've received over the years, what's been the attitude toward you in the skate community? At first there was a pretty heavy backlash for having sponsors that were non-endemic, uh, more corporate, but uh, nowadays I think that people know I have the best interests of skating at heart and that I keep skating's integrity at, at the priority. Um, and e even with the young generation, having sponsors that aren't skate companies is very commonplace now. If you could redo any moment in your career, what would it be? Um, wow, uh, if I could redo any moment, uh, it would be not doing a loop in a full gorilla suit. <laughs> I remember that one. Now knowing what you know now, what's something that you would go back and tell 14-year-old Tony? I would say uh, you're not gonna believe what you're in for, and right. if anyone asks you to do a loop in a gorilla suit, please decline. Now your early signature hairstyles were copied by so many skaters. <laughs> How did you land on those hairstyles? Really, my, my friend Kevin Staub and I were just trying to grow our bangs out, and um, I just kept sort of trimming up the rest of my hair until I had a pretty big flop, and then that became known as the flop. In <laughs> fact, some barbers were offering Tony Hawk haircuts in their signs outside. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the flop. Um, this is it right here, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is prime flop days right there. Look at in that. fact, um, it was so, I guess, iconic that Thrasher Magazine dubbed it the McSqueeb. <laughs> Are you going to go back to that? Uh, I don't think I have the fullness to go back to that, but I would love to. Tony, as a father, what do you hope your kids learn from you? I hope I have taught them the value of perseverance, of believing in yourself, and uh, creating your own path in life. And they're really good skaters. They all skate, yeah. And by the way, I love that video of you teaching your daughter how to drop in on the vertical ramp. She's so oh, great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I didn't think that would go so viral. It went so viral. It was everywhere. But do you get nervous about them getting hurt? I do, but I feel like they ha all have a pretty good sense of their limitations. Right. Some are more daring than others. But at this point, they're all almost full-grown adults, and they have a better sense of their limitations than I do. Now, what has Riley Hawk done that Tony Hawk can never do? <laughs> uh, you name it. I think, firstly, to make a career as a pro skater without having to compete, um, just doing video coverage and photos, uh, being a male model, <laughs> uh, having a, being a rock star, having his own signature shoe oh in his God. 20s. I mean, the list goes on and on. So you're jealous then, right? I, no, I'm just really proud of him. <laughs> cool. And do your kids offer any input on what you post online or put on social media? Uh, only if it includes a picture of them then I will, I will run it by them and get their approval. So, Tony, San Diego, how long have you been living in this beautiful, beautiful city for? My whole life. And besides San Diego, where else would you call home? I would say my personal vert ramp. Yeah? Yeah, hey. my, uh, that's sort of my home away from home. That's my happy place. Very, very cool. Now, growing up here, did you surf too? Yeah, I actually started surfing before I started skating. Now, I would imagine that you as a skater makes for a good surfer, right? Uh, I'm not great at surfing. Uh, I, I'm actually scared of big waves because if I fall on a big ramp, it doesn't come crashing after me and, <laughs> and try to drown me. Um, and also, I just don't get time to chase the swells these days. All right, let's check out some skating. So, Tony, what do you think has brought the biggest change in your sport? I would say the advent of social media. It's really leveled the playing field in terms of how to get recognized mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, kids can make their own scene in their own region and really become a pro skater without having to chase the magazines and the coverage and the video and everything. It's amazing. And what's the most exciting change you've seen in skating over the past decade? Uh, the rise of female skaters. There's some rippers out there. Right. Now, in, 20, in 2020, it's being introduced as an Olympic sport, which is incredible. Were you involved in making that a reality? Yeah, I was in some of the early meetings of organization. I actually went to the IOC in Lausanne uh, and I campaigned for it for a bit, and then once I realized it was actually going to be a reality, I stepped back from all the political process, and I'm just there to watch as a fan now. 
That's so cool. Is it harder to skate in front of a camera or an audience? I would say it's hard to skate in front of an audience. Uh, camera does not make funny if you fall, right. and it gives you a second chance. Oh, whoa. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, which excited you more, visiting the White House or being featured on The Simpsons? Oh, being featured on The Simpsons was by far one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me. Thank you, Sarah Hall. Uh, I really, the idea that they created an episode around me was just unbelievable. Is it safe to say that you may be the only person in history to have skated the White House? Uh, well, Andy McDonald was there introducing Bill Clinton, and he claims that he stepped on his skateboard, but Andy, pictures are it didn't happen. True. Now, skating is a solitary sport, but it creates such a community. How do you explain that? Um, I think it's more that there's a camaraderie, especially if you go to the skate parks. People really love to see put each other pushing their limits and, and overcoming their fears. And uh, as much as it is an individual pursuit, there's so much teamwork and, and right. it's really more like a party. And what is your relationship with the Bones Brigade like right now? I still keep in touch with the Bones Brigade. Um, Tommy, Mike, Lance, uh, uh, Rodney, and um, Cab. You know, we're all like still hanging out. We still skate together. Right. Now you're gonna show me some moves. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. Oh, traffic alert. <laughs> I don't want to stink my kids, though. No, you definitely don't want to do that. And there is Tony Hawk making it look easy for question number 73. Did you ever find animal chin? No, why do you think I built this? Why do you think I'm still out here doing it? Do you want to come join me in the search? Like me, skate with you? Yeah, come skate with me. I don't even, what the hell is this? There you go. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing, but. Okay, you ready? You just gotta, gotta lean forward All when right. you drop in. Okay? Let's do it. And, and believe in yourself. All right. One, two, three. Yeah! Hey, do a kick flip. Dad, he's not that good at it. Tony, I think I just did a 900. Yeah, you wish.